Hello again and welcome back. My name is Michael Fudge and this is lesson 11 in our series where we learn to program in the Java language. Lesson 11 picks up where lesson 10 left off with loops. In lesson 10 we looked at the for loop. In lesson 11 we'll take a look at the while loop and specifically how you can use this loop with flexible exit conditions. We'll look at three forms of the while loop where you have the pretest, the exit condition comes in the beginning of the loop, the post test, the exit condition comes at the end of the loop, and then the mid test where the exit condition comes wherever the heck you want it to come. Let's get started. So on the agenda today is we'll overview the while loop. We'll go back to our counting up, counting down example that we did with the for loop. I'll write the exact same output, but I'll do it with while instead of for. Then we'll do a code example where we play the classic guess a number game. And we'll do this with three different versions, one with a, th one with a pre test loop, one with a post test loop, and finally we'll finish up with the most flexible mid test loop. One of the key points from the last lesson was the iterative programming construct or loop. Iterative programming constructs repeat a series of statements until a Boolean expression is no longer true. We call this expression the exit condition. In order for a loop to be successful, the variables in an exit condition must change so that eventually that exit condition will be false. If this does not happen, the loop will run forever and we'll have an infinite loop, which is usually a bad thing. What you'll learn today is that the exit condition no longer has to be placed at the beginning of the loop as in the for loop. All right, as you can see, I have my NetBeans IDE open and I've opened up a, a project called Wild Loop Basics and I'm inside the Wild Loop Basics Java class. This basic class does the same thing that the for loop did. It simply counts up and counts down. As you can see, I already ran it and there's the output. The difference between a while loop and a for loop is a for loop has the initializer, the exit condition, and the increment of the loop control variable, all contained within the construct of the for. The while loop only has an exit condition, as you see right here in line 11 you are responsible for establishing the loop control variable and the incrementer. And those happen anywhere you want within the body of the loop or before the loop. Generally speaking, it makes sense to declare the loop control variable outside the while block and then increment or decrement the loop control variable within the body of the while loop. As you'll see in a future example, we won't necessarily do incrementing or decrementing. We'll rely on user input to stop the loop. So what I'd like to do, since I coded this example up for you, is I'd like to trace through it so you can see what happens. And along the way, we'll, look, we'll inspect the variables and look at the watches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. Press Control F5. I'm about to execute line 7. I'm going to push F8 and do that. And now I have variables initialized. I have max as 10 and i as 1. And now I can inspect a watch on i less than or equal to max. And so i less than or equal to max is true. So I will fall into the body of the loop because my exit condition is not false. This is why they call it a pretest loop. The exit condition is tested before a single line of code in the body of the loop is executed. Continuing on with F8, I print out the variable, counting up 1, and then I'm going to increment i to 2, and then I will repeat this because i is still less than or equal to max. You can see the loop doing its thing here. And the numbers are going up. The value of i is increasing because of the statement on line 13. And my output is being displayed. So here's where it gets interesting. So i less than or equal to max is true because i is 9. Now i is 10. It's still true. Now i is 11. And this exit condition is false. And so up here on line 11, this condition's false, and it skips the while body and moves down to line 15. Now I'm going to set 
i to max so that they're both 10 and I'm going to count down in this in this set of loop and I'm going to count down with this loop but this time my exit condition is i greater than or equal to 1 so let me add a watch for that and while I'm at it I can get rid of this exit condition so I have a watch that's true so now that because this condition is true I'm going to fall into the body of the loop I'm going to print out my value of i and then decrement i, remove one from i and store it back in the variable i. Here it goes, f8. Pay attention to the value of i as it decreases. 7, 6. What I'm going to do now is switch over to output so you can see 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. And that says 5, 4, 3, just a sanity check, 4, 3, 2, 1, now it's 0, 0 is not bigger than or equal to 1, so the X condition is false. I'm up here in line 19 next to the while loop, but because this condition is false, I'm going to skip this block and go down to line 23, and I do. Well, I hope that gives you some insight into how the while loop works. Again, the while loop is different than the for loop because you are responsible for initializing the loop control variable outside the while loop body, and you are responsible for when the loop control variable gets changed inside the body of the loop. In the for loop, those two things happen up at the top in the for statement. The while statement only has an exit condition. And once that exit condition is no longer true, the body of the while loop will not be executed. These next three examples demonstrate the power and flexibility of the while loop. In this example, I'll write a program that asks us to pick a number between 1 and 10, and it will keep asking us for numbers until we guess what the computer picked as the random number. It's a classic number guessing game. The catch is I'm going to write the exact same program logic three different ways. This will really help you understand the flexibility and power of the while loop. So as you can see, I have my setup here, and I, I didn't I saved you on watching me do some typing here, but I have at my uh, scanner line, so I have a way to get input, and I have a, a random number generator, and then I'm generating a random number between 1 and 10, and then I'm setting guess, which is what you're going to make when you run the program. You're going to take a guess. I'm going to set that to 0, which is currently outside the value of 1 and 10. I'm doing that on purpose. This is actually going to be my loop control variable. And then I'm just going to keep track of the number of attempts you make so we can see how accurate you are in picking out the number. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just prompt you, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. What is it? All right, let's start our loop. So my exit condition is going to be while your guess is not equal to the number. Remember, guess is initialized to 0 and number is some random number between 1 and 10. So right now, there's no way that guess is going to be equal to number. That's why I picked guess as 0 to start. This is a common trick that we have to play when we want to do a pretest loop. You always have to make sure that when it first hits the while loop, it's going to fall into the body if that's what you want. So now I need to prompt the user to make their attempt and then accept input from them, like so. I'm just going to print out a prompt that says attempt 1, attempt 2, attempt 3, your guess. And then I'm going to let the user type in their guess. Then I'm going to accept their guess as input. And then finally, I'll increment attempt. And this will repeat. Lines 17, 18, and 19 will repeat until I finally enter a number here that is equal to the original number that was randomly generated up here in line 12. So when the loop finally exits, we know that somebody guessed the number, and therefore I can say something like this. Finally, you guessed it. It was guess. Perfect. Let's run the program and see it in action. I'm going to move this up a bit so I have some space. I'm anticipating needing quite a few guesses. Here we go. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. What is it? 4. 
Uh, how about six? How about nine? Ten? Three? Five? Finally, you guessed it. It was five. Ooh, that took me six attempts to guess that. But you see, what was happening here is every time I took a guess, as long as it wasn't the right guess, it kept repeating lines 17, 18, and 19. And because I'm testing this first, I had to initialize guess to a value that was going to satisfy this initial condition to be true. Loops like this, where you ask the user for input, are better served by post-test loops. Let's write this, rewrite this exact same code as a post-test loop next. Okay, here I am again. This time I have the same setup as before. My input, my random number generator. I'm generating a number between 1 and 10, putting it in number. My guess is 0. My number of attempts is 1. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. What is it? It's all the same. The difference now is I'm going to use a post-test loop version of while. The beauty of the post-test loop is it will execute at least one time regardless of the initial value of guess. So I can actually take guess and just do it like that. It doesn't matter what the value of guess is because it will guarantee to execute this loop once. And this uh, pattern that we use is useful when you want to sanitize input. That is, you ask someone for a number of a certain value or range and you can guarantee that they do that and they don't put a number outside that range. You keep asking them for that number until they, they enter it correctly. Because the while comes after, I can't just start it with a curly brace. So there's a keyword I use called do. I say do. And then at the end of the do, I say while. And then in the parentheses goes my exit condition. And my exit condition is going to be the same as before, while guess does not equal number. And what I'm going to do inside here is the same thing I was going to do before, which is print out attempt number one, your guess, or attempt number two, your guess, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then accept input from the user and store it in guess, and then increment the attempt. And I'm going to repeat that until they finally guess the number. Then after they guess the number, of course, I want to say, finally you guessed it. It was. And then just for grins, I'm going to run this again and show you that the same results are achieved. Your guess, 3. Your guess, 4. How about 9? 7? 8? I'm not very good at this game. Finally, you guessed it. It was two. <laughs> it's amazing how bad I am at guessing numbers. So you get my point. And uh, the, again, the difference between this version and the version we saw before is the exit condition is at the end of the loop, which guarantees that the block or body of the loop will execute at least one time. This is very useful when you know you're going to accept input from someone and you don't want to have to bother with setting an initial value that will cause your while to fall in your, your while uh, exit condition to fall into the body of the loop. All right, next let's look at the most flexible version, the mid-test loop. All right, here's my setup for the mid-test loop. If you'll notice, it's the same setup that we had in the other two examples. I've got my scanner and my random number generator, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The difference this time is I'm going to use my while loop but I'm not going to use the exit condition. When I say while true, it's never going to be false, which means it's going to loop forever. And you're going to see that the way I'm going to handle when I want to exit the loop is with a very special statement called break. The reason that you would want to use this type of loop, that is a loop with a mid-test condition, is that you can test for a lot of different reasons to exit the loop. It can be very daunting in a pretest loop to write something like while customer equals happy and amount greater than five or dog not equal to cat. I mean, there's lots of conditions. I mean, who can figure out this logic, you know, to determine when it's true and when it's false? It's just nuts, right? So the idea behind the mid-test loop is you can establish 
one or more cases when you decide it's time to exit the loop. And furthermore, you test those cases simply by using an if statement. So the pattern we're going to use is if guess is equal to number break. And this break command says exit the loop. And I can have, I can test this condition. And a lot of times we'll write it this way in Java because we want it to look like it's one statement. Um, or you can do it this way as well. And the idea is that I can put statements above this or below this. And so that's why it's called a mid test loop. I can put code or logic that I need anywhere I want in the body of the loop and then test whenever I feel like it uh, for the condition that tells me to exit the loop. So let's uh, continue on with what we had before. We had something like this, right? And then after, the, after we exit the loop, we said something like this, right? So as long so this while true says loop, and then we're going to print out, you know, attempt one, your guess, and then you're going to take a guess, and then we're going to increment attempt. And if guess so happens to be no, equal number, we're going to just break, and then we're going to come down here. If guess doesn't equal number, we're going to go back up here and loop again, because it's true forever. And then we're going to take attempt two, ask for a number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, we will guess the number, and uh, it'll stop the loop. Let me try to run this and see if I can guess in less than three tries. Your guess, four. Oh, I guessed on the first try. Amazing. I, I almost don't believe it. I need to try it again. Your guess, five, four. Oh, I'm back to wonderful. Oh, there we go. It, it was nine. Not bad. Five attempts. So you see kind of how that works. And you can see the advantages of maybe doing it the, this way. But here's one of the main advantages of doing it this way. One thing that kind of bothers me about um, this code is that this, which is really kind of part of the whole program logic loop thing, is outside the body of the loop, right? So because I'm doing a mid test loop and I have a block here with if, I can decide what I want to do when this condition is true. And one of the things I'd like to do when it's true is print this out. So see, I can make my code a little cleaner by putting the, the logic of what happens when the exit condition is hit. I can say when the exit condition is hit, do this maybe do a few other things and then exit the loop and then outside the while loop we're back to status quo doing the rest of the code that we want to do and this code will actually work the same as what we just had for example your guess three four oh finally you guessed it, it was four I'm getting better at this I guess last but not least I'll leave you with what is probably the most powerful aspect of using the mid test loop. That is, you can combine the mid test loop with a series of ifs or an if else ladder to evaluate several conditions and then determine based on those conditions whether it's time to exit the loop. For example, I can say if your guess is equal to number, you know, print out you guessed it and break. Then I could say else if your guess is bigger than 10 or your guess is less than 1. Let me print out something like, come on, that's not between 1 and 10, you goof. And then let me finally add an else. So let's think about this for a minute. If the number's not between 1 and 10, I'm going to print this out. If the number is the guess, I'm going to do this and I'm going to quit. If I fall down to this else, then I have this condition where it's a number, but it's not the right number. So maybe I want to say, nope, that's not it. Uh, let me give this a run, and then I'll trace through this a line at a time so you can kind of see the magic unfold. Let's give it a run. Your guess, negative 100. Come on, that's not between 1 and 10, you goof. How about 100? Come on, that's not between 1 and 10, you goof. Nope, that's not it.
it was three. I'm back to guessing like a fool. Okay, let's do one last exercise where I'm going to set a break point right here. Then I'm going to debug it. Just so you can watch the program flow in the body of the while loop. So I'm going to use F8 here as I step through it. So I fall in here and I print out attempt one your guess. Then I ask for input. I'm going to put in um, 99. So guess is 99. Then let's fall through the if. So does 99 equal the, the secret number? Which now we can look at it in the debugger. The secret number is 9. That's the random number between 1 and 10. So 99 does not equal 9. So I skip that down to the else. Then I test, is 99 bigger than 10 or less than 1? Yes, it is. So it prints out, come on, you goof. Then it goes back up to while true, and it prompts me for another input. And I'll put in a 3 this time, even though I know the secret number is 9. Then we're going to increment our attempt. The guess is not that number. The guess is between 1 and 10, so I skip this. I fall down to the else. And it just simply prints, nope, that's not it. Now this last time, I'm going to guess the correct number through the power of debugging. I know it's a 9. So then I have guess, which is 9 equals number, which is 9. And now this is true. Then I fall into this print. You guessed it, and then I break, and then that jumps out of the while loop. I'll jump down here. There we go. Finally, you guessed it. It was 9. Well, this concludes our lesson on Java programming and the while loop. We learned that there's three ways that you can implement a while loop. You can implement it as a pre-test loop, where you test the exit condition at the beginning of the loop, a post-test loop, where you, exit con you test the exit condition at the end of the loop, or a mid-test loop, where you test it wherever you want. Thank you very much for watching, and if you have questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to post them on YouTube. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye now.